welcome to the part 14 of this playlist so if you have not yet subscribed do so this will help you with the certifications on cloud uh, AWS Azure and Google Cloud it is more or less imperative for uh, IT practitioners to be certified so let us look at this question in which situation should you save a workbook as a PDF document so if you are looking to distribute your viz then you put it in a pdf so your visualizations if you want others to view it you can put it in a document format that can be easily viewed and if they want to print you can do that as well putting it in pdfs will help you with printing will help you with presentation handouts like each page of the PDF can represent a slide or a viz, and it helps you with documentation. A lot of clients they kind of mandate to document the viz that you have created and insights for future reference or archival purposes. So, this will help you with meeting this requirement. So option d would be our final answer so if you look at option a so a is wrong because you know what it is saying that uh, your users have desktop but not tablet reader see if you can view a report using tablet reader you can view it using desktop as well desktop is the, the father man if the father there is nothing that a father cannot do that a son can so if you go by that concept then this is this is what it means now b says you want document you want document users to be able to filter see documents one thing remember documents are static you cannot apply filters and sorts even this pdf that we can save you would not be able to apply filters and then it C says your analysis does not require live connection to a data source. So that is not a reason that uh, mandates that you should move and export to a PDF. Why? Using a workbook, you know, you have two types of uh, data source connections. One is the live connection. The other is you can create an extract. So option C. If you do not require a live connection, then we would still operate using extract and a workbook. We would not save the workbook in a PDF. Okay, so C is wrong. Hence, option D would be our final answer. Which three elements are included in a packaged workbook? The extension is TWBX. So, a packaged workbook. It includes everything, data source files. It does not include TDC files or PDF copy of the workbook. See, PDF copy, it's not there by default. You have to create, create it. It is just like you are not born with your clothes. Clothes is something which human beings have created, okay, and you wear it once you are born but you you are not born with it after you are born you wear the clothes so a package workbook it will also include background images see whatever you require to put in a report see when people say uh, we are going for a backpack will you just take the bag no you will take all the necessary things that is required for your travel it can include torch it can include knives it can include ropes, water, uh, coffee makers, some food items, everything. So similarly here, you will include background images. You will include custom shapes that you use in your wish. Okay. And when you save it, it creates a self-contained. If you are saving a TWBX workbook, a workbook has everything. man. It creates a self-contained archive that includes all necessary files including images and custom shapes it also includes extract files if you are not using live connection 
it will include extract files also what is extract it is a compressed optimized snapshot of your data sources so the extract file is also included in the package this ensures that the data is in your workbook itself and it need not need to go elsewhere so if you are in a flight you have your workbook on your laptop you have the extract file on your laptop you can just perform your analysis you don't need a connection to the database and so on so these would be our answers like we told here tdc file will not be a part of it pdfs will not be pdfs are just like clothes tdc files it does not include these are data source customization files so these are not required okay this is the final answer now here question 42 you have a bar chart okay for example this is a bar chart by mean bar doesn't mean where you can have alcohol it is a bar chart bars these are bars blue lines these are all bars okay so what's happening is it has a dimension on the column shelf it has a measure on the row shelf this is how we usually create now they are telling that hey guys we want to make it a stack bar chart what should we do next so here option a says hey just let's put a measure to the color on the marks card so if you do that what will happen is when you drag a measure to the color option on the marks card it assigns colors to the marks based on the values of that measure so this is how it works it will give you different sort of colors these are the steps how to achieve it but the dimension values would be mapped to a color palette it will not make it a stacked bar now b says you drag a measure to the left of the measure in the row shelf so the row shelf already has a measure and you want to drag one more measure so if you do that it will create a dual axis chart and two measures will be displayed on separate axis okay this will not create a stacked bar chart so this is a stacked bar chart no this is a stacked bar chart so option b would not work option c says that you drag another dimension to the size on the marks card so if you put it on the size the size uh, of the bar based on the dimension would change for visual encoding okay this will not create a stack bar so c would not work that leaves us with d it says put and the dimension to the color of the marks card. and this is exactly what will work because you create a stack bar in tab view using a dimension on the column shelf and a measure on the row shelf and you need to use the color option on the marks card here's how you do it so now you might say hey a was correct no boss the difference between a and b is a is trying to do it through a measure you don't want to use a measure for it you have to do it through a dimension and then only you would be creating a stack bar chart and these are, are the steps you put the dimension on the column shelves put the measure on the row shelf on the marks card you see color option you drag the dimension there and that's it tab view by default would create a grouped bar chart and each bar represents category and subcategories within each category are stacked on top of each other and if these will be differentiated by color you see it is differentiated by color you have the topmost portion which is blue in color and the bottom portion is amber in color so this would be our final answer so if you have not yet subscribed this is your opportunity to do so uh, help yourself with the latest certification content in today's world it's absolutely important to get certified on cloud products and there are other complementary products which uh, you, you know complement the cloud journey uh, which are those snowflake tab bi power bi and so on so there is a link in the description you can click that to become a cloud kernel or a cloud ninja member the difference is cloud ninja will have access to advanced certifications like a professional architect in aws and those kind of stuff so this one is um, available for cloud kernel as well as cloud ninja so become a subscriber become a member and gain access to a lot more important stuff
to help you with your certification journey. This brings us to the end of this part. Stay tuned, stay focused. We will see you in the next part.